For years, the scientific community operated under a widely accepted theory. Homo sapiens, that's us, originated in East Africa. This idea became deeply entrenched in our understanding of human origins, shaping research and influencing countless studies. The prevailing belief placed the emergence of our species approximately 200,000 years ago, a milestone in the vast expanse of geological time. This date served as a cornerstone for mapping the journey of humankind. This timeline was largely based on the remarkable fossil finds unearthed in Ethiopia, which provided crucial evidence supporting the East African origin theory. These discoveries painted a vivid picture of our early ancestors. But in 2017, a groundbreaking discovery challenged this long-held belief, sending ripples through the world of paleoanthropology. This paradigm shift occurred at Jebel Irhud, a seemingly unassuming site nestled in the heart of Morocco. This discovery changed everything, forcing scientists to reevaluate our understanding of where and when our species first appeared. Researchers meticulously excavating the site unearthed a treasure trove of fossils, skulls, offering a glimpse into the faces of our distant ancestors, jaws, providing clues about their diet and physical characteristics, teeth, each fragment holding a piece of the puzzle of human evolution, dating back nearly 300,000 years old. This was far older than anyone had anticipated. This pushed our species' origins back by a staggering 100,000 years, rewriting the textbooks and challenging established narratives. This wasn't just a new record, it was a fundamental shift in our understanding of human evolution. It suggested our beginnings were spread across the vast and diverse continent of Africa, not limited to one specific region, implying a more complex and interconnected evolutionary history. These early humans looked strikingly modern, possessing facial features that wouldn't seem out of place today, though their brains were shaped differently, hinting at a different cognitive organization than our own. Tools found with the fossils showed they hunted, demonstrating their resourcefulness and adaptability, used fire, a crucial step in human development that provided warmth, protection, and a means to cook food, and crafted sophisticated implements, showcasing their intelligence and problem-solving abilities. The Jebel Irhud people were pioneers, pushing the boundaries of what it meant to be human. Surviving and innovating on the African plains, they left behind a legacy that continues to shape our understanding of ourselves. Their existence extends our timeline, forcing us to reconsider the established narrative of human evolution, and deepens the complexity of our story, revealing a more nuanced and intricate picture of our origins. For a third of our history, we evolved solely in Africa, adapting to diverse environments and developing unique traits, developing the traits, both physical and cognitive, that would later let us conquer the globe, spreading our species to every corner of the earth. The Moroccan fossils remind us that the story of humanity is far from complete. Humanity's roots are older, broader, and more interconnected than we ever imagined, stretching across the African continent and beyond. Our story is always being rewritten by new discoveries, constantly challenging our assumptions and deepening our understanding of what it means to be human. Every species on this planet, from the smallest bacterium to the largest whale, has a unique two-part Latin name. This system, known as binomial nomenclature, provides a standardized way to identify and classify all living things. Ours is Homo sapiens, wise human. It's a name that speaks to our intellect and self-awareness, a reflection of the qualities we often associate with being human. But how did we get this name, and what does it truly signify? The man who gave us this name was Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist, physician, and zoologist. In the 18th century, Linnaeus revolutionized the way we classify organisms. He developed a hierarchical system placing us rather controversially at the time, grouping us with primates based on our anatomy. He recognized the shared characteristics we have with apes and monkeys, laying the groundwork for future discoveries about our evolutionary history. But it was Charles Darwin a century later who truly explained why all life is related, connected through a vast and intricate web. Darwin's groundbreaking work revealed that the diversity of life we see around us is not a collection of independent creations, but rather a family tree with shared ancestry. This interconnectedness is shaped by evolution and natural selection the process by which organisms change over time in response to their environment, favoring traits that enhance survival and reproduction. Based on his understanding of evolution, Darwin predicted our origins lay in Africa, alongside our closest relatives, 
chimpanzees, and gorillas. This prediction, initially met with skepticism, has been repeatedly confirmed by fossil discoveries and genetic research. His work placed humans firmly within the natural world, not above it, challenging the long-held belief in human exceptionalism. We are part of the same evolutionary story as every other living thing on Earth. Our name, Homo sapiens, is both a label and a legacy. It's a testament to our unique place in the natural world and a reminder of our shared ancestry with all life on Earth. Our intelligence, language, and creativity are products of evolution, not gifts from above. They are the result of millions of years of natural selection, shaping our brains and bodies to thrive in a complex and ever-changing world. Linnaeus named us. Darwin gave us context. We are the only surviving members of our genus, shaped by a long, intricate evolutionary journey. A journey that has taken us from humble beginnings as ape-like ancestors to the dominant species on the planet. Our name is a reminder of where we came from and how we got here. It's a call to understand our place in the grand tapestry of life and to act as responsible stewards of the planet we share with all other species. It's a common misconception that humans evolved directly from modern apes, but that's not quite accurate. The reality is far more nuanced and fascinating. The truth is, we apes, members of the primate family Hominidae, we share fundamental characteristics and a deep evolutionary history with all other apes. Specifically, we share a relatively recent common ancestor with chimpanzees and bonobos, our closest living relatives. This ancestor, which lived millions of years ago, was neither human nor chimpanzee, but a distinct species that gave rise to both lineages. Picture a fork in the evolutionary road, a pivotal moment in our history. One path, after countless generations, led to the chimpanzees and bonobos we know today, adapting to life in the African forests. The other path, equally long and winding, led to us, the hominins, the lineage that would eventually give rise to modern humans. The evidence for this shared ancestry is compelling. Our DNA is remarkably similar, nearly 99% identical to that of chimpanzees. This incredible similarity underscores our close relationship. This genetic proximity firmly establishes chimpanzees as our closest living relatives in the animal kingdom. Gorillas and orangutans are next in line, sharing a more distant but still significant common ancestry with us. We share a suite of physical traits with other apes, including grasping hands, perfect for manipulating objects and navigating arboreal environments. We also have forward-facing eyes, providing us with binocular vision and depth perception, crucial for judging distances. Furthermore, we share complex social lives with other apes, exhibiting intricate communication, cooperation, and social structures. The differences between us and our ape cousins, while significant, are the result of separate evolutionary journeys, shaped by different environmental pressures and selective forces. These differences arose after our lineages split, as each group adapted to its unique ecological niche. It's important to remember that evolution isn't a ladder with humans at the top, a linear progression towards perfection. Instead, it's more accurately depicted as a branching tree, with countless paths diverging and evolving independently. Chimpanzees adapted to the dense, resource-rich forests of Africa, developing specialized skills for survival in that environment. Our ancestors, on the other hand, adapted to the open savannas, developing bipedalism and tool use to thrive in this new landscape. Both lineages have been evolving for millions of years, each accumulating unique adaptations and characteristics. And both chimpanzees and humans are equally successful in their own niches, perfectly adapted to their respective environments. Apes aren't less evolved than humans, a common and misleading phrase. They're simply different, following their own evolutionary trajectory. Understanding our shared ancestry with apes is crucial. It connects us to the natural world, reminding us of our place within the broader web of life. We're one influential branch, but just one branch, on the vast and ever-expanding tree of life. Our story is deeply intertwined, inextricably linked with the rest of nature, and understanding this connection is essential for ensuring a sustainable future for all. Walking upright on two legs, bipedalism, set humans apart from other apes. Early hominins like Lucy, over three million years ago, already showed adaptations for upright walking. Bipedalism freed our hands for carrying, sharing, and eventually tool-making. This shift allowed our ancestors to transport food, care for young, and manipulate objects with precision. 
Around 2.6 million years ago, they began crafting stone tools, unlocking new food sources and survival strategies. Bipedalism may have evolved for energy-efficient travel across open landscapes and to spot predators. Most importantly, it set off a feedback loop. Better tools led to better nutrition, fueling brain growth. Walking upright was the first step toward everything that followed. It was a leap that changed the course of human evolution. For most of our history, Homo sapiens lived only in Africa. But about 60,000 years ago, a small group left, beginning the journey that would populate the world. Genetic and archaeological evidence traces their roots through the Middle East, into Asia, Australia, and Europe. In Europe, they met and interbred with Neanderthals. New environments demanded new tools, clothing, and art, signs of complex thought. The Americas were the last to be settled, likely via a land bridge from Siberia to Alaska. By 12,000 years ago, humans had reached every habitable continent. Our adaptability and curiosity drove this global expansion. The out-of-Africa migration connects all people today. Our ancestors' footsteps shaped the world we live in. Human skin color is a vivid example of evolution in action. Melanin, our skin pigment, varies in amount and type, adapting us to different levels of sunlight. Near the equator, dark skin protects against intense UV radiation, preventing sunburn and preserving folate. As humans moved north, lighter skin evolved to absorb more sunlight and produce enough vitamin D. This adaptation prevents diseases like rickets in low UV environments. The pattern is clear darkest near the equator, lighter toward the poles. Skin color reflects ancestral geography, not biological race. It's a story of survival shaped by the sun. Our bodies are finely tuned to our environments. Evolution's mark is visible in every shade of human skin. Evolution is ongoing, visible in our bodies and in unique population adaptations. Take wisdom teeth. Once useful for chewing tough foods, they're now often problematic as our jaws have shrunk with softer diets. Many people today never develop wisdom teeth, a recent evolutionary change. Another example, Tibetans thrive at high altitudes thanks to a gene, EPAS-1, that helps them use oxygen efficiently. This adaptation likely came from interbreeding with Denisovans, an ancient human group. Evolution can happen quickly, sometimes by borrowing genes from others. Our shrinking jaws and high-altitude adaptations show evolution isn't just history, it's happening now. Our genes respond to changing environments and lifestyles. Human evolution is a living process. We are still adapting, even in the modern world. The story continues in our DNA. Human evolution hasn't stopped, it's just changed direction. Our own inventions, agriculture, cities, medicine, are now the main forces shaping us. The ability to digest milk as adults, for example, evolved in populations that domesticated cattle. Disease resistance genes like those protecting against malaria have spread where needed. Today, global travel and mixing are blending our gene pool, reducing differences between populations, new challenges, chronic diseases, changing diets may drive future evolution. Our biology is still adapting generation by generation. We are the architects of our own evolution now. The pressures may be new, but the process continues. The story of Homo sapiens is still being written. 300,000 years of Homo sapiens history reveal a story of adaptation and resilience. We are the last of our kind, shaped by upright posture, dexterous hands, big brains, and most importantly, culture. Culture is our ultimate survival tool, allowing us to adapt without waiting for biology to catch up. Language and shared knowledge bind us together, fueling innovation and cooperation. We've survived ice ages, crossed oceans, and even begun to edit our own genes. Our journey is far from over. New challenges await in the 21st century. But our past shows we are defined by ingenuity and adaptability. We are the wise humans, still evolving, still learning. Our future will be shaped by the culture we create. The next chapter of humanity is ours to write, together.